This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about statics, CE 2301. We're talking about Cartesian vectors, which are the XY coordinate system way of uh, dealing with vectors. It's also XYZ, as we'll phase into. <clears throat> First, we're just going to talk about the simpler form of X and Y. Um, most people find Cartesian vectors the easiest way to work with vectors. And it's fundamentally because using an XY coordinate system that's a right angle to each other, we can do a lot of things with the Pythagorean theorem, um, sines and cosines, and it just makes it a lot more convenient to work with. So if I have a vector somewhere in my XY coordinate system at an angle theta from the X axis, We've talked about resolving vectors into their components, and we did an AABB axis, and we just used geometry and, and trig to figure out what the components are. By drawing the, the, using the parallelogram law, drawing parallel lines, we can show that if we have a vector F, angle theta, Fx, the component in the f in the x direction, is f, the magnitude of f, times the cosine of this theta angle, because it's the ad adjacent over the hypotenuse. Fy, the component of the vector f in the y direction, is f times the sine of theta. We can express that in a different way that the vector f is equal to the vector fx plus the vector fy. And then as we transition into three-dimensional xyz coordinates, I want to also introduce this term, this concept of the angle to the x-axis being alpha and the angle to the y-axis being beta. And we'll talk about this later, but fx is also equal to f times the cosine of alpha, and fy is equal to f times the cosine of beta. We'll talk more about that later. These are like direction angles. Okay, now it's time to introduce the concept of the unit vector. A unit vector has a length of 1, and... It is really a special vector with no real dimension. It's just a direction in space. In the XY coordinate system, we have these two special vectors called I and J. I is a unit vector in the X direction, length 1, and we show it with the I with a bar over it because it is a vector. Similarly, the vector J with a bar over it, is a unit vector in the y direction, and it has a length of 1. So we're going to take some of these concepts and combine them with the unit vector and uh, say how we can express a vector in a bunch of different ways. If I have a vector, once again, f at an angle th theta from the x-axis, I can, as I said up here, um, fx, the vector fx, is the scalar number fx times a unit vector, in the, which is a pure number, just a length 1 in the x direction. And so it's fx i. <clears throat> and using this term up here, where fx, the scalar number, is f cosine theta, I can substitute that in here for fx, and I can say that fx, the vector, is equal to f cosine theta times i, the unit vector in the x direction. Same thing with the fy vector. You can express it in those similar terms. And looking ahead to when alpha and beta are the angles to the x and y axis, I can write this as f cosine alpha, and this is f cosine beta times the j. Okay, another way to express a vector f is up here fx plus f, vector fx plus f, vector fy. 
which is equal to using these terms in there, substituting these in there, fx times the i, fx j, fyj, also equal to f cosine theta i plus f sine theta j, and using the position vector, the position direction angles alpha and beta, can express it in this manner. I can also combine the common terms, which is the scalar magnitude of f, the vector f, and multiply it by the parentheses cosine theta i plus sine theta j. Once again, doing the substitution for alpha and beta. And so, all that being said, then want to look at a unit vector in the direction of f, so it has a length of 1. So it's the vector f divided by the scalar magnitude of the vector. So substituting this term here, f parentheses cosine theta i plus sine theta j divided by f, I can then, um, that gives me the vector of uf, and the scalar of uf is the cosine, the f's cancel in that equation, and so I get cos, uf is equal to cosine theta i plus sine theta j. So these cosines and sines are really just the, uh, uh, I really should have a bar over this one. These are the same direction and sense as f, but their length is 1. So we're going to be using this unit vector over and over again. <clears throat> and down here I have a statement. Because fx and fy are perpendicular to each other, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So the scalar value of f, which is the magnitude of the vector f, I can say that it is the square root of the sum of the squares of the fx and fy components. Similarly, the unit vector ux and uy are perpendicular to each other, so Pythagorean theorem applies. The unit vector u is equal to vectors ux and uy, which is really just the cosines of the angle and the sine of the angle to the x-axis. And same thing applies. The unit vector, which is length 1, is the square root of the sum of the squares of the cosine and the sine of the direction angle. Really helps if we apply this to an example, a couple of examples here. I have an example where I've got, I'm given the vector is 50 pounds, F, and it's at an angle 40 degrees counterclockwise, so consider it positive, from the x-axis. So I can write the components, Fy and Fx. Fx is equal to the magnitude, 50, times the cosine of that angle, 40 degrees. It's 38.3 pounds. Fy is 50 times the sine of the 40 degree angle, 32.1 pounds. So I can express it, express it in a Cartesian form like this. The vector f is fxi plus fyj, which is 38.3i plus 32.1j pounds. So this is a way of expressing this vector. This is the Cartesian way. Also, I note that the unit director, unit vector, uf, is really just these cos the cosines of these angles, of this angle and the side of this angle. So uf is the cosine of theta i plus the sine of theta, theta j. Just do, doing the cosine of putting 40 degrees in there for theta, I get in this case the unit vector in the direction of f is 0.766i, 0.643j. Another way we're going to present problems to you is we're going to give you the Cartesian components 
and we're going to want to know what the magnitude and the angle it makes with the x-axis. So in this case, I'm given that the Cartesian vector is 75i minus 120j. So that means it's 75 positive in the x direction, and it's 120j in the y direction, so it means it's negative, so it's pointing down. So I've drawn it graphically like this, with my x and y axes, 75 for the x, 120 for the, the j, or the y direction. I draw the parallel lines, connect the origin with the intersection, and then I can see that those triangles in the relationship with the Pythagorean theorem, the scalar magnitude of the vector f is the square root of the sum of the squares, 75 squared and 120 squared, so it's 141.5, report your answer to 142 kilonewtons on a homework problem. And I can figure out that angle theta because this length, 120, is the opposite over the adjacent is the tangent. So the tangent inverse of negative 120, got to remember to keep that negative sign in there, divided by 75, tangent inverse is negative 58 degrees. So this angle is negative or 58 degrees.